Hello, everybody. Today is episode five of the Everyday Living Recipes with Love podcast. Welcome, welcome. And if this is your first time listening, this is a recipe podcast where we discuss recipes. And today is part two. Now, if you didn't listen to the part one, go back and listen to it. It's um, family picks of stuff that me and my family picked out for the cookbooks that she made for her radio show. She didn't really make them. She had just some recipes she would contribute to the cookbook, and she would have all of us pick one out that we really liked to put in the cookbook. So that's mainly what that's all about. Um, She just, some of these recipes we just, came across and we liked and so we wanted to put our name on them and put them in there and say that's what we liked. That way the listeners could like relate to my grandma and her family and say hey this is their favorite recipe let's try it. And so they're not really all her recipes in these cookbooks. I didn't know if I made that clear enough on the first episode. She did help put them together in some ways. She didn't do it all by herself by any means. So that's not what I meant by any of that. I want to clear that up. Um, But the recipes that she had, you know, me and my family pick out and the rest of the family pick out is what this is part two about. The first part was when we discussed the one I picked out and my mom picked out. And then there was just like a random one in the middle. So I did that one too. It was like a casserole. I think it was enchilada casserole. Anyway, if you didn't watch that one, Go back and watch it because it's worth a watch. Well, I guess you don't really watch it. You listen to it. (laughs) So listen, not watch. But you know what I mean. Um, So this is a part two to that. These two recipes, I'm actually doing three recipes. The one that my brother picked out, that was one of his favorites that we made a lot. And then the one that my dad picked out, which I remember making that a lot at home too. So they're both absolutely delicious. Um, so those, and then I'm going to do the last recipe today is going to be the one that we all kind of put our name on. So we just put our last name family on it and we all just picked it out for the, for the book. So it's kind of neat. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a part three because there is a couple more that I would like to share that my great grandmother picked out. So it'd be her mom. Um, I might share those on part three. You let me know if you're interested in part three, but I think I might do that as the next episode. I don't know yet. So I'll put your input down below in the comments if you would like to see a part three of this. And again, these are just recipes that we had a lot growing up and we liked. And so she wanted us to be involved and put it in the cookbook. That's all that is. So the first one is my brother's. He uh, picked out a pretty I don't know, pretty simple one and one that kids have a lot, I'm sure. Um, I remember my mom making this a lot of times when we wanted pizza. It's a homemade pizza recipe. Not really homemade because it's like a box of dough, but somewhat homemade, right? Because you still kind of got to make the dough and knead it and stuff and spread it on the pan. And it's just like a a mix of dough that's already mixed. I mean, sh- yeah. Anyway, it's homemade, but it's really, the crust is already kind of, you just put the water in it and you still got to mix it up and make the dough. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is fully homemade, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I remember having this a lot at home and it was a very fun recipe to be a part of. We'd all help out and make the crust and put our own little toppings and create our own pizzas and That's the fun about making pizza because you can like create your own, which is really nice. So this is the homemade pizza recipe if everybody's ready to hear it. I'm going to always start off just so everybody knows that this is your first time listening to. I always start off with the ingredient list first. Then I read the instructions on how to, you know, do everything. So that's how I do my recipes on here. I just want you to know how it works here. In case you watch something, other recipe show that does it differently. So, okay, so this is the homemade pizza and you need one box of Jiffy pizza crust. 
By the way, it's the best crust you could ever get. A one pound of hamburger, pepperoni slices, desired amount, if you like pepperoni. One can of sliced mushrooms, if you like mushrooms. One package of two cups of mozzarella cheese shredded. And then whatever pizza sauce you like. Uh, Here it says ragu pizza sauce. That one is good too. I really like ragu. I also like the great value pizza sauce. I know I'm like a bargain shopper. The great value one's super good too. And then light Parmesan Alfredo sauce. So that sounds super good. So you're going to grease the pizza pan with cooking spray. Mix pizza crust according to box instructions. In a mixing bowl, cover with towel and set in warm place. See what I'm saying? You still have to kind of knead it and stuff and like let it rise. And so it is kind of homemade basically. So and then you brown the hamburger, uncover the dough once it rises a little bit. And you spray cooking spray on fingertips. You spread pizza dough evenly in the pan. So your pizza pan. Put in oven and bake three to five minutes. Spread pizza sauce on dough. So you have to bake the dough first, obviously. (laughs) Um, You spread pizza sauce on, sprinkle on the hamburger, then the mushrooms and pepperoni or whatever toppings. Like I said, it's pizza. It's so versatile. Put anything on it you like. You can take anything off that you don't like. That's what I love about pizza. Put cheese on and bake at 400 degrees or 425, depending on your oven, I guess. Some ovens are more powerful than others. And until cheese is melted, put as much meat or vegetables on as desired. That's variations at the end. So. That's what I really like about pizza. You just do whatever you like and it's so creative. And so that's a recipe for that. I will read it one more time. And then we're going to move on to my dad's recipe, which is a big head at my house when I was younger. And I can't wait to share that one too. So here's the ingredient list again. One box Jiffy pizza crust. One pound of hamburger. Pepperoni slices. One can sliced mushrooms. One package of two cups of mozzarella cheese shredded, ragu pizza sauce, and light Parmesan Alfredo sauce. You're going to grease the pan, mix pizza crust in a mixing bowl, cover with towel and set in a warm place for it to rise, brown hamburger, you uncover the dough, spray cooking spray on your fingertips so it doesn't stick to you. (laughs) I've forgot that step many times when I'm doing things. And let me tell you, the outcome is not fun. And then you're going to spread pizza dough evenly in the pan, put in oven, and bake three to five minutes. Now, I'm assuming you put it at 400 because it doesn't say a temperature, so I'm sure any temperature is fine. Spread pizza sauce on dough and sprinkle your hamburger and meats and mushroom and pepperoni. Put cheese on and you bake at 400 or 425 depending on your oven. Until cheese is melted. So that's the recipe for that. Super delicious. And that pizza crust is the best. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. So, 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 so good. So that was the one my brother picked out, which was a very big hit when we were younger. We wanted pizza, and sometimes nothing compared to the homemade crust. Now we're going to move on to my dad's recipe. It's not his recipe, but the one he picked out for the cookbook. It is, dun, 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 ham balls. <laughs> ham balls are super good. The only thing I do not like about it, and me and my brother both didn't like the sauce that you make with it. It's kind of like a sweet ketchup, kind of. Um, It's like a really sweet version of it because it's like brown sugar and stuff in it. Not a fan of the sauce, but the meatballs are super, super, super good. And I, I'm really glad I found this recipe because I really wanted to make it some night. We haven't had it yet here in our house. And so I thought, well, maybe we can try it sometime. So I'm glad I found this. It actually is really sweet that I found it because I'm like, hey, this sounds so good. I remember it so much in my childhood. Mom would make it. Well, obviously, because it was my dad's favorite, right? (laughs) 
No, we really liked it. So it was really good with like macaroni and cheese for picky kids like us. Um, it was so good. So here's the recipe for the ham balls. And it is kind of a long one, kind of not. To me, it seems like a lot of steps. But I haven't done anything like this before. I've never worked with ham loaf or nothing. So, and this might be a little longer episode, just FYI. Last time we were really struggling to get to the 20 minutes. This time I don't think we're going to have a problem. So, just so you know, it's going to be a longer one. So, you're going to, okay, so there's a ham ball side of the recipe and then the sauce side. So, the ham ball side is two pounds of ham loaf. Two cups of oatmeal, two large eggs, milk. You pour some in the mixture to moisten it. That's what it says. Okay, so first we're going to start with the ham ball instructions, okay? Combine ham loaf, oatmeal, eggs, and milk. You mix that well. You pour desired amount of milk. Now it says in here they didn't measure the milk. They just kind of put a little bit in to moisten it. You kind of just guess. You mix well. You roll into medium-sized balls, place on a cookie sheet that is covered with foil to prevent messy cookie sheet. Or you can just use parchment paper, whatever you prefer. You bake at 375 until lightly browned. Then you remove from oven. Okay, so now you're going to make that sauce that I was never a fan of. Ugh. But here's the ingredients for the sauce first, and I'm going to go through the instructions of the sauce, okay? So you're going to want one-fourth cup of brown sugar, mustard, vinegar, and water to desired thinning. Now, it doesn't have any, like, measurements on the mustard and vinegar, so I don't know. But I'm going to read the instructions. It might explain it to us. (laughs) I don't know. So you make sauce with desired amount of brown sugar, which is a fourth of a cup, and then however much mustard and vinegar you want in it. And then the water, you use more water if you want a thinner sauce. I didn't measure the ingredients, it says in here. So you cover the ham balls with the sauce, and you bake for five more minutes in the oven at 375. So has anybody tried ham balls? They are so good minus sauce my mom would have to like do half the pan with sauce and half without and that's just what you have to do with picky eaters so thank you mom (laughs) now I kind of know what she went through because I'm still kind of picky in my adult years but my kid that is picky it is so 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 hard to find things she'll eat but now I kind of know the struggles my mom went through so thank you so much mom I love you so much now Um, I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go through it. And you can write it down if you're writing it down. Or if you don't have time to write it down, I can always email these recipes to you. So let me know. And you can listen for the email at the end. And you can just email me and say, hey, I missed that recipe. Could you send it to me? And I would gladly type it out for you. Or You know, I could scan it in my computer or whatever. So I can do that for you if you didn't catch it. But I will go through them twice. So for the ham balls, you need two pounds of ham loaf, two cups of oatmeal, two large eggs, and milk. You just pour a little bit of milk, it says. So combine ham loaf, oatmeal, eggs, and milk. Mix well. Pour desired amount of milk. Mix well, roll into medium-sized balls, place on cookie sheet that is covered with parchment paper or foil, and then you're going to bake at 375 until lightly browned. Remove from oven. Now you're going to make the sauce, fourth a cup of brown sugar, mustard, vinegar, and water to desired thinning. So you're going to make the sauce with desired amount of brown sugar, Mustard, vinegar, and water. Use more water if you want a thinner sauce. And of course, we didn't measure the ingredients again. So, you know, you just kind of put what you like to taste, you know, more mustard or vinegar or whatever. Then you cover ham balls with sauce and you bake for five more minutes at 375. Okay, so that was the one my dad picked out. 
Now I'm going to read you the recipe that we all put our name on in the cookbook that we liked as a family. And it's kind of like the handball recipe, but it's a different kind of meatball. So it is called dun, 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 Swedish Meatballs. <laughs> I'm being really goofy on this one. Okay, so that's what we picked as a family in here. So you're going to need one pound of hamburger, one egg, Milk to moisten, kind of like the handballs. One cup of oatmeal. Oh, it's just like the handballs, right? Um, onion flakes or powder, whatever you desire. I would probably pick the powder. I'm not a big onion fan. I like the flavor of it, though, but not the crunchiness of the onion. And then for the sauce on the Swedish meatballs, you're going to use cream of celery soup, cream of chicken soup, one can of milk, and Worcestershire sauce. I can never say that right. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> okay, so for the meatballs, you're going to mix together the ingredients, form into balls, and you bake at the same temperature as the ham balls. So it's very similar. You just use a different kind of meat, right? So 375 until lightly brown. And so for the sauce, you're going to simmer sauce on stovetop while balls are baking. While the balls are baking. <laughs> Put hamburger in crock pot. Add sauce. Simmer in crock pot for a few hours. Can double meat mixture. So it's like a meat sauce on the crock pot, right? That's what I'm getting from it. Anyway, so you make the balls in the oven and then you make like a meat sauce to go over it. Or something like that. Hell, I don't know. I'm just here sharing recipes. <laughs> okay, so sorry about all the laughing on this one. I'm just having a fabulous day. So I'm just laughing. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. If not, I'm sorry. So that is the recipe for the Swedish meatballs. I will go through it one more time. And then we will kind of discuss what the next episode is going to be about. So one pound of hamburger, one egg, milk to moisten, so you don't like measure it, you just put a little bit into moisten, one cup of oatmeal, onion flakes or powder, whatever you prefer to put in your recipes. And so you just, for the meatballs, you mix all that together, form into balls, bake at 375 until lightly browned. Then for the sauce, you're going to do cream of celery soup. Cream of chicken soup, one can of milk, and Worcestershire sauce. Sorry if I butchered that word. I'm trying my best. I never can say it right. And I can't be the only one. So you're going to simmer sauce on stovetop while balls are baking. I'm assuming when it says put hamburger in a crock pot, I don't know. You know, I'm kind of confused about that. But I'm assuming it all can be just a meat mixture that you put on top. That's what I'm guessing. I have no clue. So if anybody can answer that for me, go for it. So that is part two of the Family Picks recipe. And I hope you had just as much fun as I did. I'm sorry if I was a little goofy today, but maybe somebody needs that today. Maybe it'll brighten their day. Who knows? So this is um, part two, episode five of the Family Picks. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to do a part three because there is a couple that my great grandmother picked out that I'm thinking about doing. If anybody's interested, let me know at my email at everyday living recipes with love at gmail.com. And everything is lowercase all together, no symbols or anything in between. So you can also email in. If you've missed the ingredient list or the instructions, I'll be more than happy to help you on an email. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I'm not very much help with the Swedish meatball one. I was kind of confused on what it meant. But the only thing that makes sense is a meaty sauce. What do I know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there might be a part three. If I don't do a part three, I might do an episode about... Um, some turkey stuff with turkey meat, which I'm really big fan of turkey meat. I love it. I've had it in Hamburger Helpers before and like 
substituted it for hamburger and some stuff. I think it would be super good. Actually, I think I've had it in tacos before and it was super delish. So I really, really love turkey. That is one thing I will always have at the holidays. I always want a turkey. Always. I know other people might have their own opinions. and That's totally fine. But if I don't do a part three of the family picks, that'll be the next episode. And can you believe it? It's episode six now. I think I'm only going to do like 12 episodes of this season. There's going to be one season at first. We're going to kind of see how it goes. And then I'll decide if I'm going to continue on with this podcast. We'll see. I might. My plan is to do as many episodes as possible. But we'll just have to see. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do these. A lot of time to plan them out. And But I love it. I love, love, love doing this. It is so much fun. I can actually see why she liked doing this. So I really can relate to her. And the way her life was on being on this show that she had and just talking to everybody. It was so fun. So fun. I really want to thank you for joining me today. And I really thought it was going to be a little longer episode, but it wasn't. You know, I got to reading that one. I think it was the handball one. And I thought, well, this looks a little long, so it might be a little longer today. Turns out it's kind of the same time as the others. So. My uh, timing and my guess of it was wrong. (laughs) So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.